Hang on a minute. Doesn't it just look like we're selling little bags of coke to kids? Good day, fellow legends, and welcome to another episode of Business Blaze with I, your boy with the blaze. This episode is brought to you by Square to the Space, also known as Squarespace, a great place to build a website that is a lot of place and space and such things, from websites and online stores to marketing tools and what analytics. Mm-hmm. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run, what can you run? Your business. That's right. Check out Squarespace through the link in the description below. Just got a little bit more about them in a bit. This is Business Blaze. I already said that. What happens here is Danny shall write me a script. I'm going to read the script and Sam is going to add some fine vintage memes. The other day I was on my subreddit, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Simon Whistler forward slash that is a goddamn mouthful. There's, there's not that end forward slash bit, just forward slash Simon Whistler. And someone's like, when is Simon going to, stop, uh, going to stop explaining what Business Blaze is at the beginning of every episode? And I have to. I have to do it every time. Because someone standing in front of a camera and looking at a script is not something that YouTube really has as a format. So I want to let people who have stumbled across this channel on their adventures on the internet, what the hell is going on? And if you're seeing this for the first time, well, that is what the hell is going on. Uh, this one's all about more weird things companies made. Whenever I say see something like this, it's obvious I told Danny, the writer, that a previous video about weird things companies made did really well. So, uh, we have a follow-up because I'm lazy and creatively bankrupt. Before researching this script, I wouldn't have known the name of Volkswagen's best-selling product today. Ah, oh, I'm such a big brain. I know it's hot dogs. I don't mean their best-selling product of all time. Even I would be able to get a able to hazard a guess that that's the Volkswagen Beetle, which was founded on the dodgy suspension system of the Nazi Party. True story. The Beetle went on to become the third best-selling car in history, shifting over 21 mi million units since its launch in 1938. But as of 2000. 19, they don't even make the Beetle anymore. Today, you might be forgiven for thinking that the con- They really made Beetles in 2019? I mean, I know there's the new Beetle, you know, like they tried to refresh the Beetle like they refreshed the Mini to much weaker success. Um, some might even say failure. I don't know though, was it so people bought that car, but it's really ugly. Like, Mini Cooper looks pretty cool. I'm not sure if I'd drive one myself, but they are pretty cool. My wife loves them. She would get one. Today you might be forgiven for thinking that the compact crossover SUV, the Volkswagen Tiguan, and I, I've seen this around, I know exactly what this car looks like, I have no idea how to pronounce its name. It's not as bad as the other one. What's that? Is it like, it's a, it's a Kia Quashquai or something? I'm like, what the is a quash guy. What is going on? I don't know which country like uh, that car comes from, but you could you not have adapted it to be a little more like, I don't know, <laughs> easier to say. I assume it's Asian. It sounds Asian, like the wild use of cues everywhere. It's certainly the best selling car at the moment, having generated over 6 million sales, and it's on the journey to becoming the best selling SUV in Europe. But it's still not Volkswagen's most popular product. For that, you need to browse through the company's official parts directory, hiding inconspicuously amongst the replacement seat covers and shock absorbers and panorama sunroofs, you'll find Volkswagen's best-selling product today, which has been given the part number 199-398-500AT. However, I was quite surprised to discover that it was just a nice juicy sausage. <laughs> yeah, boy. I think this is because they sell them in the canteens, right? And they're very popular because Volkswagen is German and the Germans they love the bratwurst. Volkswagen have been producing homemade food for workers in their remote factory in Wolfsburg since 1938, largely because the factory was planted slap bang in the middle of nowhere and the nearest Taco Bell is 241 miles away. I, I have to say, I do know a little bit about Taco Bell in Germany because I'm friends with an American guy here and he is absolutely mad into Taco Bell. What's up, Grant? He was like trying to work out where the nearest Taco Bell was and he's like, Simon, it's in Germany. We must go. And we looked it up and I'm like, Grant, that's on a military base. They're probably not going to let you eat there. <laughs> An American military base, I mean, because they apparently export Taco Bell <laughs> for American military personnel, which is kind of incredible. The company first began producing their sausage, the Volkswagen Currywurst, in 1973, and it didn't take too long for the sausage to expand its horizons beyond the Wolfsburg factory and to become available to the German public in shops and restaurants. The 25 centimeter long pork sausage is infused with spices and is usually served smothered in ketchup. Not any old ketchup, of course. It has to be Volkswagen's own thick, spicy, curried ketchup which has been available to buy since 1997, although, unlike the sausage, it doesn't appear to have been granted its own part number in the directory, to its ever never-ending disappointment. The currywurst is still produced exclusively at the Wolfsburg plant today. Back in the 1970s, the live animals were actually brought to the factory and slaughtered on site. Holy sh**. <laughs> the Volkswagen abattoir. I love the word abattoir. How dare you! 
Uh, but thankfully, they act to arrive pre-butchered these days, which is probably good news for the factory workers. I would imagine it's quite distracting to be working on the production of an ignition box against the constant soundtrack of squealing pigs. Holy sh**. Daddy. Now sold in 11 other countries, you sadly won't find the Volkswagen Currywurst anywhere in the US due to the land of opportunities, tight restrictions on the import of uncooked meat. But that hasn't done much to flatten the global rise of the sausage. And although Volkswagen once made the light-hearted claim that their Currywurst is the company's most popular product without wheels, recent sales figures reveal that it could accurately be, accurately be described as the most popular product full stop, outstripping sales of any individual car for most of the 2010s, although admittedly perhaps not making quite as much money. Yeah, I mean, of course they're going to sell more units of it. <laughs> and I, because you just go there and you're like, yeah, I need something for dinner, and you buy eight of them. You don't just go to the Volkswagen plant, it's like, yeah, I'll buy eight Tiguans. <laughs> just doesn't happen. If you're buying eight of a car, like, at once, I guess you either run, like, a fleet of cars for a company, or you're buying, like, a fleet of Ro Rolls Royces because you're, like, a Saudi prince or something. <laughs> nice little extra touch from the German car dealership is that they usually throw in a packet of sausages and a bottle of ketchup with the purchase of any new mo uh, new model of Volkswagen automobile. That's got to be a tempting deal breaker for anyone on the verge of spending about 30 grand on a new set of Volkswagen wheels. My only disappointment is that Volkswagen failed to grasp the opportunity to really tie together the two very distinct products of automobile and spicy sausage. Wow, Danny, where are we going with this? If they're bothered to produce one of those clever meat pocket pocket car exhaust grills, OGBB, uh, specifically designed to cook a long, fat sausage, I reckon the company could have been sizzling new sales in both departments. But a bob bob -tsh. Very clever. Maybe some of these following companies that diversified into weird and surprising new products will show the Germans how the job is really meant to be done. I doubt it, though. <laughs> that, everybody, was the introduction. Welcome to Business Blaze. They do go on. Bick twist. I know that most people probably associate the Bic brand with disposable pens or razors, but I tend to associate them more with disposable lighters, which probably just reveals uh, that over the course of my life I've spent far more time smoking than I have writing or shaving. And Danny, you write a lot. It's like what you do. Although you don't write with Bics, because I would really hate to get just scribbled da Danny's scribblings. The French company officially known as Societe Bic was first founded in 1945 by Marcel Bic, who was who managed to build a global empire designing products that are, design are destined for the bin not very long after you purchase them. In that sense, he's got a lot in common with Yoko Ono. No, 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 Danny, he doesn't. No one should be purchasing Yoko Ono in the first place. Quite incredibly, back in the 1950s, the newfangled ballpoint pen in Europe would set you back about $12.50, which is the equivalent of about $175 today. Because it's an incredible piece of engineering. That little ball in the end, people are like, wow, and it's better than a fountain pen and more convenient. And then they got to mass producing it, and now it's, it's basically free, isn't it? And the problem is that they're an annoying tendency to clog up and leak all over your fingers. Marcel Bick single-handedly sparked a revolution in the ballpoint pen market when he created his own disposable version, which sold for just 19 cents and was generally considered to be more reliable and involved less pissing about than the crazily expensive leaky sh**. It's rare that you get a product that is just much better and less expensive. In later years, and if you've developed something like that, congratulations, you're probably going to be ripped. I mean, just don't make it too cheap, okay? In later years, the Bic company developed similar pioneering strategies for cheap and dear, cheerful disposable lighters and disposable razors, but I'm not convinced that they made entirely the right call when they launched their new range of disposable underwear in 1998. I love the idea of disposable underwear. The Bic, dis I, I mean, because I love, because uh, I hate the environment and love waste. The Bic disposable pants Pantyhose was available only in Greece, Austria, and Ireland. That is an interesting selection of diverse countries. Uh, where I assume the idea of throwing away your underwear after just one use is a bit more widely accepted than in the rest of the world. I suppose that there could be good medical or social reasons for buying disposable underwear. For example, the product could be of some benefit to people who suffer from sensitive bladder conditions, or people who can't afford to take a shower or get their laundry done. Or perhaps it was intended to be a solution for helping to get the laundry bar down a bit for rich people who can't be asked to do anything. But they don't do their own laundry anyway, Danny, do they? Instead of going through that tedious cycle of washing and drying laundry, you now could just throw your underwear away at the end of every day and put on a new pair the next morning. Whatever the intention, the product didn't exactly generate much excitement. The whole venture had been a surprising move from Big, because even manufacturing the underwear was a complicated pain in the ass. Pens, razors, lighters all share the same plastic injection molding process, whereas the production of disposable pantyhose is an entirely different process to successfully pull off, and it's not as if it could be shoved through the same distribution channels either. It felt as if Bic was making life quite hard for itself by seizing on the disposable angle, uh, but coming up with a product that fell well outside of anything else they were smoothly producing at the time. I had a coffee 
somewhere. I'm gonna get my coffee, it's gonna be cold. Hey, problem solved. And it is still, I was like, this must be cold by now. And then I sip it and I burn my tongue. And I'm like, oh, that shows me. That's the coolest fucking story I've ever heard in my entire life. That's insane. Is it, can I hear it again? Yes, Sam, you can. Dick. And it is still, I was like, this must be cold by now. And then I sip it and I burn my tongue. And I'm like, oh. Shows me. But the biggest problem was the potential customer's mental associations with disposable products. The very name conjures up an image of low-end products which are designed to do the job for a while before you lob it in the bin and replace it. That's fine for pens and razors, but people might feel uncomfortable in more ways than one about the idea of buying cheap underwear, and the material of the big pantyhose was reportedly unpleasant to the touch. <laughs> I bought some fairly cheap underwear in my time, and I've used it like disposably. Like if I'm on a big, uh, I think I talked about a big cycling trip I took, and it's like you don't want to carry around clothes for like 10 days. So I'll just stop into a supermarket every couple of days, buy a new pair of under, buy a couple of pairs of underwear, and then just throw the old ones away. How dare you! And the cheap Tesco underwear. It's not so, I mean, it's not bad, but it's not the most comfortable, especially if it's never been washed. And you're like, am I getting some disease from like some weird factory halfway around the world? So the only element that linked the new product to the Bic brand at all was the very same element that would dissuade people from purchase. The Bic pantyhose only enjoyed a very brief shelf life before being permanently pulled from the shelves. And we never got to see if Bic had any follow-up plans to launch the Bic disposable shower curtain, the Bic disposable coffee table, and the Bic disposable electric heater. I'd be very nervous about buying an electric heater that was disposable. <laughs> You're like, how much are these components that went into this again? That sounds like a fire hazard. You know what is not a fire hazard? Today's sponsor, Squarespace, and mwah, what a transition. So what's up with Squarespace? Well, Squarespace is an incredible tool for building a website online. Look, the world's uh, in a bit of a mess right now. People are getting creative with their time. They're reaching into their savings account to start a new business or launching a new politics blog to share their opinion with families and friends. Don't do that. Start a blog. Don't make it about politics or religion because you're going to upset someone. It's just, and it, it's also just not fun. And there's also enough of that stuff anyway. Start a blog about something else. Start a store. Even better. That can make you, blogs can make you money as well. With Squarespace, the world is yours. It's the perfect tool to help you fashion a website into whatever you want to be. Look, it is the platform to use when you're looking to get started with a new website. If you visit simonwhistler.com, that is a personal website that I built with Squarespace. Magic. And it just has like a list of all my channels and one thing i really love is on the home page i have like the background is one of my videos playing blurred with like i'm describing a, a very visual thing to you sam you could put it on the screen right now that would be grand i made that with squarespace it took less than a day it's uh, it's remarkably easy and it looks amazing in my opinion but that's not my design skills i used one of squarespace's beautiful templates that you can customize incredibly easy to make a website that looks like it was custom built for you but it's not it's a little trick it's a template a beautiful template that's what you really want because then it's super affordable and it looks super expensive brilliant oh uh, what else is there with squarespace oh my 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 what isn't there? Email campaigns? Yes, you don't have to pay separately for a super expensive email list like I foolishly have done. Patronage portals, social integrations, member-only areas, analytics, commercial options, 24-7 customer support. I've reached out to their support when I had a trouble. It was actually pretty amazing. Like, sometimes you like 24-7 customer support. So they'll reply in like 24 hours and seven days. No, no, no. Squarespace are very good at this and they're right in there and they just fix up your problems. It's, it's very good. It's very easy. Everything just works, I think, is the is the real <laughs> that should be the main selling point squarespace works because i've tried doing websites before and it's like why is this broken why is this not working but squarespace just nail it every time so when you're ready to get started on the next big project of yours big or small if it involves a website it's got to be with squarespace go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch your new site go to squarespace.com forward slash blaze and you will save 10 percent of your first purchase of a website or domain Brilliant. And let's continue. Gerber go gaga. It has been said that the student diet isn't typically regarded as being particularly healthy. When you're on a limited budget and you're already running late for the beer guzzling contest down at the pub, you're not going to waste too much of your precious time preparing fine cuisine. I did have some epic cooking sessions though when I was at university. Me and a mate of mine would go to the supermarkets and we'd go to, you know, you got that section where all the, the is going out of date is. We would just raid that place for the cheapest stuff we could find and then we'd take it back Back home and we'd absolutely cook these giant feasts <laughs> like and you'd get all sorts of crazy shit. like i really got into monkfish because i just found like a monkfish there one day and monkfish is amazing and it's super expensive we got it for fr basically free you know it's like the end of the day it's been discounted like 90 percent we had lobster we were just we were doing some we were cooking all sorts of shit. you uh 
You want to cook crystal meth? And we'd never eat it all. It would just be like these huge feasts. We also brewed our own wine and got fairly drunk as well. It was a good time. Sometimes I miss being a student. Other times I definitely don't. Because it's also like, look, if I wanted to just quit work this afternoon and go home early and cook an absolutely massive feast, I totally could but I have very little desire to. <laughs> you usually make do with either pasta, beans on toast, scrambled eggs, dog food, damn, or if you really hit rock bottom, a pot noodle. I can remember when Golden Wonder launched a limited edition turkey and stuffing flavor pot noodle around Christmas time, and it was so bloody awful that nobody in town bought it. It's also mega depressing. <laughs> when our local shop reduced the price to just eight pence per knot pot noodle to try and quickly get rid of their mountainous excess stock, <laughs> me and my mate called in and pretty much bought the whole lot. The owner of the shop even kindly offers us a lift home so that we could shove all 124 pot noodles in the trunk of his car. It might not have been the most glamorous or proud dining experience, but we didn't have to worry about buying food again for weeks. So we thought it was a shrewd investment. Danny, your body is living, probably lived to regret that. <laughs> like, I don't know what's in pot noodle, but it can't be healthy. <laughs> and if that sounds a bit manky, at least it's quite as bad as what Gerber was trying to push onto students who lived alone in 1974. The Michigan-based company had been dishing up jars of mushed up baby food since 1927, but it appears that somebody in the marketing team had got a bit Gaga, where they decided they could launch a very similar product for grown-ups. I laugh at this, right? I do laugh at this, because I got a kid, and that they don't eat the baby food anymore, but they used to, of course, and it is nasty. Like, no one wants to eat that. It even smells rank. However, I do have, like, meal, like breakfast and lunch every day. I just eat, like, it's a, a meal in a shake. Like, you just drink this, like, food replacement thing, because I don't have time to, like, break for, like, I, I as soon as I get to work, I eat my breakfast. At lunch, I eat it, uh, eat it, drink it again, because it's like super time saving. But yeah, so I, I don't know, I shouldn't have mocked these people so hard. The cunningly named Gerber's Singles Range, oh, this is so depressing, isn't it? Uh, provided small servings of pureed fruits, vegetables, starters, and desserts. <laughs> starters. Look, if you're eating food out of a glass jar, you're not gonna be like, oh, well, to begin tonight, sir. Uh, all ready to be spooned out while you sat watching Open University on the TV. <laughs> They're ranging to Open University like a, uh, it's a university that, I think it's like a correspondence course, is that what it's called? The range included such mouthwatering flavors as creamed beef, blueberry delight, Mediterranean vegetables, and beef burgundy. Microwave meals have already solved this problem. Why do we have to liquidate them? <laughs> it's kind of it's super nasty. Suddenly those limited edition turkey and stuffing pot noodles seem quite classy. It's quite possible that Gerber had gone and invented the saddest product in the world, agree mate uh, as it and it turns out that even students and single people have at least some basic levels of dignity and self-respect not much but some even the very name of the product appeared to scream out that anyone who bought this product was destined to be lonely for the rest of their miserable lives damn danny throw in the shade <laughs> to echo the words of susan casey from business 2.0 magazine they might as well have called it i live alone and eat meals from a jar <laughs> Brilliant. I like you, Susan. Sadly for Gerber, it appears that their target audience wasn't quite ready to regress to the state of being a baby, and what the company hoped would be a formula for success ended up being sent to the back of the crib. Oh, hilarious. Zippo Pongs. I've talked about the dangers of experiencing a random attack while making your way through the rather ham late at night. My mate Gareth always used to carry a small tin of lighter fluid around with him in his coat pocket. He reckoned that if he ever got threatened with violence from a gang of local undesirables, his plan was to douse himself in the lighter fluid, set himself on fire, and then scream at the gang, Well, come and have a go then, you p***ies! That is pretty badass. I mean, you're gonna have horrible burns, but I mean, they're not gonna with you. I wasn't entirely convinced this would be the best solution, but still, what a way to get any Americans watching be like, why does he just carry a gun? Why doesn't he carry a gun? <laughs> <laughs> and the people in Texas are like, why does he carry six guns? I don't know, te Texas has a lot of guns, right? Or do they just have bigger guns? I don't suppose many people are instinctively attracted to the idea of pouring flammable liquid all over themselves. And this was kind of the problem with the product launched by Zippo in 2012. Zippo the Woman is one of many entries into the fragrance market for the legendary Pennsylvania producer of the famous reusable metal lighter considered to be an essential bit of kit for soldiers fighting on the front line and people who take their dogs for, walk, for a walk on quite breezy days. There's something cool about Zippo lighters. Like, I don't smoke, but I'd love, if I did smoke, you can be absolutely certain that for one, I would have a Zippo lighter and I'd also have one of those cool metal tins that you flip open and there's like a nice row of cigarettes on the inside and i'm like yeah smoking is cool i'm gonna get demonetized for that aren't i
I mean, smoking sucks, don't smoke. But don't smoke, it's horribly bad for you, even if it is cool. I feel like, as a teenager and a young kid, there was so much effort put onto making smoking look not cool, that it just made it look cool. Whereas if you just, and I mean, they also did focus on the health stuff, but I mean, if they'd embrace it being like, yo, look, I mean, smoking's cool, and it tastes good, and the nicotine rush is kind of nice, but it will destroy your body. I'd be like, okay, well, at least I'm gonna make an educated decision. Just focus on the horrible health effects. Just be like, you're gonna die of cancer. It's gonna be terrible. Apparently this floral fruity fragrance is targeted at the strong, independent women aged between 18 and 36. That is mighty specific. Uh, and it reflects the role of mother, working woman, and adventuress. Uh, what do you just say, adventurer? Do we really need to have the feminine version of adventurer? I didn't even realize adventurer was just for men. And it smells quite musky. But quite aside from all this frothy marketing bullshit, the most distinctive thing about Zippo the Woman is that it comes in a fancy bottle shaped exactly like a bright, bright pink Zippo lighter. And although the fragrance may well be infused with palisander rosewood and mandarin orange and Venus flytrap green, Really? You can't help feeling that the average customer would be, page 10, discouraged by the instinctive feeling that they're going to end up stinking of lighter fluid and becoming a walking fire hazard. Even if you've created the finest fragrance in the world, nobody, nobody, I lost my place so I'm repeating words, is going to bother finding out what it smells like if you package it up in a sandcastle bucket and call it rotting turtle. Business Blaze Marketing Lesson 101 today. Thank you, Danny. Although I do think if I was going to launch a fragrance, I might call it Rotting Turtle. It's got a certain ring to it. Rotting Turtle TM. A fragrance for men. And in the advertising, there'd be... You, you wouldn't have any idea what's going on. It would just appear around Christmas time. There might be an ocean. There might be people walking slowly on the beach in black and white, and then it would come up. Rotting Turtle. A fragrance for men. I will figure out how to make a fragrance called Rotting Turtle. <laughs> it's happening! <laughs> In a way, you can't blame Zippo for seeking to develop fresh revenue streams. You only have to go back as far as the 1990s to see a time when Zip, when the light has accounted for over 90% of the company's total sales. But as the world faces increasing pressure to give up the nasty habit of smoking and turn to something less self-destructive such as murder, it's understandable that there's going to be less demand for windproof lighters. During the 2010, sales of the lighter have continued to flicker and fade, and now accounts for only 54% of Zippo's total sales. And as they put more focus on watches and leather clothing, uh, leisure clothing, and body wash, and camping tools, and sh**. Thank you uh, for that, Danny, and shit. it really um, clarifies things for me. Also, I feel also nervous about rubbing Zippo, like, something shaped in Zippo all over my body. It's like I'm just in the shower, like, I hope I didn't confuse this with my lighter fluid. <laughs> and although putting a fragrance in a lighter-shaped bottle seems like a bizarre idea to me, you can still buy the product today, and the original Zippo the Woman has even expanded into a growing range of new fragrances for both men and women. So, what do I know? Maybe it's just me who finds the idea of emulating the act of dousing myself in lighter fuel just a bit weird. It's not just you, Danny. I wouldn't like to do it either. To be honest, I'd, ra I'd much rather douse myself in my new fragrance from men. Rotting Turtle. Hershey's Get High. On first glance, this final entry might not sound like a massive diversification or a bold expansion into uncharted territory from a long-respected family-friendly company. The Hershey Company has been flogging chocolates and candles since 1894, and although they might not be quite as famous outside their native US soil, they were practically unheard of in the UK until about 10 years ago. They're still generating the sweet smell of success across 60 different countries today. Back in 2008, Hershey's launched a new range of breath mints, which may not seem remarkable in itself. The le but the legendary makers of Reese's Pieces, Jolly Ranchers, Kit Kats, and the lesser-known York Peppermint Patties appeared to drop the ball with the format and pack Packaging of their latest product. I'm really distracted now because all I can think about is how great it would be to have a fragrance called Rotting Turtle. I'm like, I'm not even paying attention, and I should be. And by the way, if you're interested in how my life works, um, I read three paragraphs there, probably in a way that you thought I was paying attention because I'm really excellent at reading these days because I've done it a lot. I have no idea what this entry is about. I have no idea what those past three paragraphs were. I'm really sorry. But it looked like I did write. Now, when I do videos for other channels, when I have to do something about like baseball or Lord of the Rings, I just entirely phase out. And then I watch the video back later. And I'm like, boy, it really looks like I know what I'm talking about. 
That's really crazy. How do I do that? So that was a fucking lie. Icebreaker packs were presented. I have no idea what this is about. It's wild. Icebreaker packs were presented as small, transparent, dissolvable packets of white powdered sweetener stuff. You just popped one of the heat sealed powders into your mouth, and it would dissolve to release the yummy powder xylitol. Okay, <laughs> sounds very chemically. Uh, the problem with icebreaker bags is they look suspiciously like little bags of cocaine. Awesome. And were presented in a very similar format to how you typically buy your supplies of wholesome nose candy from the street corner, allegedly. This could potentially lead to quite awkward social situations if you pulled out an icebreaker while standing at the bus stop or while chanting to the neighbors over the fence while, or while holding up a jewelry store with an AK-47 assault rifle. Jesus Christ, Danny, what is going on in your life? As you would be delivering the impression that you're preparing to snort a lion instead of just enjoying a nice flavored breath mint. Brilliant for people who really want to hide cocaine, though. More worryingly, it could lead to a whole world of childhood pain if teachers saw this stuff exchanging hands around the classroom. As one concerned parent put it, I'd hate to find it in my son's pocket and find out the hard way what it is. The Philadelphia police. I'd hate to find that in my child's pocket. I'd definitely try it. <laughs> like parents around the country. <laughs> have been admitted to hospital for snorting sugar that they thought was cocaine. The Philadelphia police weren't entirely happy with the product either. One officer bought a stash from his local Target store and then became so suspicious about what was inside the pouches that he sent it off to the lab to have it analyzed, sparking an official investigation as to whether Hershey's icebreaker packs contained an illegal substance. Philadelphia, it's from Hershey's. It's not going to. They're a giant company. They're going to get in a lot of trouble if they just start selling cocaine. This isn't the 19th century, guys. That's why the 19th century was so much better. The past was the best. I mean, when it comes in terms of access to drugs. In terms of everything else, the past was the worst. You could buy a t-shirt saying that at my merch store. PerchTheMerch.co Philadelphia Police Chief Inspector William Blackburn aired his grievances to Philadelphia Daily News, completely glorifies the drug trade. Those bastards! Glorifying the drug trade. There's really no reason that a product like this should be on the shelf. I've been in narcotics for most of my career and thought the pouches were the real thing. Uh, maybe he'd been in narcotics for just too long. It's possible that some of the reaction to this product was a trifle overblown, but it's difficult to see what exactly was going on at Hershey's in 2008. It's hard to imagine that the beloved makers of Hershey's Kisses and Milk Duds would purposefully position themselves into a surprising new drug chic brands of marketing. Yet it's baffling that at no stage in product development did one of the employees stick up his hands and say, hang on a minute, doesn't it just look like we're selling little bags of coke to kids? <laughs> but you know the business. And I know the chemistry. Perhaps everyone working at Hershey's has led, had led a life of innocence and virtue, and so the thought had never occurred to them. It's also quite interesting that when Hershey's CEO David J. West announced in the same year that the company would no longer be producing icebreaker packs in the wake of this criticism, he appeared more coldly defensive than, horri than horrified or apologetic. He just said, our packages are clearly marked with the brand name ingredients and nutritional information. So in other words, you can clearly see from the small print that cocaine isn't mentioned anywhere in the ingredients, so why are you giving them a hassle? Kind of agree. I mean, this isn't that bad. Still, they may have disappeared from shop shelves, but I suspect that they've been driven underground. If you're still desperate for a fix, just hang around the dodgiest of those street corners for long enough and someone's bound to come along and sort you out eventually. I've heard a whisper on the wind that some of the more marketing savvy dealers are running a promotional scheme for anyone who spends over $50 in a single illegal transaction. As well as the icebreaker packs, they'll also throw in a free jar of crush of mushed up cream beef flavor baby food. Rough. So you'll have something to look forward to when the breath mints disco runs out of steam. This has been an episode of Business Play. I have been your boy with the blaze. Thank you for watching. Squarespace is where you want to go. There's a link below. And thank you for watching. Well, come and have a go then, you b****s!